yeah, this is going to be a, a special video for me at the moment. Yeah, first of all, uh, the reason why I haven't put any videos out is because my bike is off the road at present because I can't afford it basically to put it on the road. So I've sawned it. Yeah, I've just been hit with loads and loads of bills at the moment. So, But I am going to put it back on the road and uh, I'll be putting more videos out when I do so. Yeah, the other thing I was going to say was, uh, obviously, um, if you stay to the end, I've got a bit of a surprise uh, for everybody uh, who's listening. And, um, yeah, I've, I've had a big think about it, and um, I'm, I'm determined, really, to do it. Yeah, it also ties in with this, uh, the actual subject I'm going to talk about. Um, it was in response, really... Um, to one of the guys um, who made let me say some disparaging uh, comments about uh, my age and, and stuff so yeah that got me thinking and uh, I thought well yeah it's been long overdue I'll put out a video and see what everybody thinks yeah the guy in one of the comments uh, on my, one of my early videos said it's about time you packed up um, biking you're too bloody old to, to uh, carry on biking and I thought, well, am I? I don't know. I don't know whether I am or not. Um, I'm 69 years of age at the moment. And I feel okay. I feel okay uh, to ride. Okay. I know your reactions slow up a bit when you're getting older, this, that and the other. There are a lot of lunatics on the road and this, that and the other. Um, I have been driving as a professional driver for about 33 years. Yeah, I, I used to teach people how to drive buses as well. So I, what I bring to the table, actually, is a lot of experience. And that counts for a lot in my book. And I'm still able to, uh, to ride the bike. And I'm still able to practice safe techniques of, and stuff. I don't see a problem at the moment uh, with my age. I know after 70, I've asked my mate, who incidentally is, is what, he's is, um, is 76 years of age, and uh, I asked him, what do you do after you, uh, you turn 70, and he, apparently he said you get it for uh, three years, I think he said. Um, the li the license, your driving license lasts for three years, and you have to keep renewing it. So, yeah... Um, am I too old? As I say, I, I, don't, I don't feel it. Oh, obviously, we've got your aches and pains, this, that and the other. Yeah, I actually feel better than when I was driving, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, primarily because when you're driving a bus, it's completely different from driving anything else, um, i.e. big wagons even, uh, or cars. The thing is, uh, what people don't realise when you're driving a bus is you're concentrating on the traffic, you're concentrating on um, the passengers, um, and you're concentrating on all the bus things as well. So it's got to be 110%, you know, all the time, and it's mentally draining. So, you know, now I'm off the buses, I feel 100%, well, you know, not 100%, but, you know, 100% better than I was on the bus, uh, actually. And when I'm riding my bike, it's uh, it's brilliant so i don't see a problem at the moment yeah as i said before yeah the you know your reactions do slow up but i've been trained over the years on the on my on the bus i mean um my forward planning has to be you know half a mile three quarters of a mile uh, in front the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm planning for uh, eventualities uh, on the bus. You have to do that. Your training says you have to do that because uh, the people on the bus depend, you know, depend on you. Um, people get hurt. When you're driving a wagon, the boxes don't get hurt if, if you break suddenly, but people do. So your driving has to reflect um that uh, situation you have to forward plan and that's when when I was teaching uh, teaching people how to drive buses that was the main crux of the driving you know is the braking 
uh, you had to plan for your braking. Uh, so consequently, your forward planning had to be that much further. Um, you know, so nobody would get hurt. And uh, I, I'm proud to say that a lot of people commented on my driving. Uh, it, was, it was really, really good. And I used to take pride in giving people a good ride anyway. And that goes to the same with my bike as well. Obviously, uh, you do plan uh, this, that and the other, but I'm, I do exactly the same when I'm riding a bike. So I don't see the problems, but I will come to uh, some of the problems in a second um, that I, I foresee anyway about riding my bike. So, yeah, at the moment it's great. It's, it's, there's no problem at all. Yeah, now on to the problems. Uh, as I said before, one of the problems they say when you're getting old is uh, you lose a certain amount of your strength, about 10% or whatever it is uh, every year. So at the moment, so I go swimming and I walk a lot and I cycle and I will be taking up my, my weights as well uh, just to keep my strength up um, really. So, yeah, that that'd be that cut that out. Um, the other thing is, is when you get when you do get older, the bigger bikes, um, the later bikes uh, that I've had in the past, uh, this that, and the other, uh, they are they are heavy, and you can feel it. You, I mean, when I was uh, when I was younger riding, later bikes didn't bother me at all, even if they're uh, you know they weighed a ton, uh, but. Uh, now, yeah, you can feel it. So, uh, with that in mind, I thought about, well, should I change this new bike? I mean, this new bike that I've got, uh, the NC750 um, XDCT, um, is really light in comparison to a lot of bikes. But, uh, then again, I thought, well... What shall I do? Um, shall I go for an even lighter bike? Um, so I was, I was searching around, searching around. And um, yeah, I'll come to the conclusion. Yeah, yep, I'll probably just as well getting a lower CC, in, um, a lower CC bike uh, than the 750. Uh, something under the threshold of 400 CC. The reason being is when I was over in France on my scooter, on my 400 uh, scooter, um, yeah, it, you know, it, it was lightish, uh, this, that, and the other. Uh, There's no brother, you could do uh, I used to throw that scooter around like uh, Billio. Uh, but yeah, I thought around about that uh, under the tax uh, threshold as well. Uh, and that's another thing I was thinking about, the, the actual cost of keeping it on the road. I've got my car on the road and I've had to prioritise with my car because I've had loads of bills and this and the other, which I won't go into. Um, you know, servicing costs on my car and everything else. So I had to prioritise with my car uh, now, that I've, you know, now that I'm uh, retired. Uh, so, as I say... With, with a low capacity uh, bike, then it's going to be lighter. So the weight won't come into it. And then with under the, I think it's under the uh, 400cc, you pay less tax. And it'll be hopefully less insurance. So yeah, that was my thinking. That was my thinking. And uh, perhaps you guys out there uh, have got your own thoughts and this that and the other I mean you know um, I'm all for uh, um, I don't know you know constructive criticism and all that but uh, uh, what I was saying but that's I was just think, I've just been mulling over it week after week and I thought shall I or shan't I but um, I, I think I think I will I think I will so I eventually will go to uh, a lighter bike anyway Anyway, when I do get my bike on the road, my present bike, um, I'll uh, I'll be putting some more videos out. I mean, that's the reason why I haven't been uh, 
pumping the videos out at the moment. So yeah, it's, uh, it's been a bit of a hard slog uh, financially at the moment. So I'll get there, I'll get there, no problem at all. But as I say, um, as far as uh, the, the smaller uh, capacity machine, the, um, the under, th what do you call it, uh, 400cc mark, then yeah, there are advantages with weight wise and uh, and fuel economy, this that, and the other. I mean, this this bike is really good on fuel economy uh, as well, but um, it'd be that much better with a you know under a 400 cc bike. Now, the the actual thing I was going to tell you about was uh, I thought I bit the bullet and I thought well why not go down there is a ktm uh showroom uh down by where i live and i thought hmm so i sussed out uh one one of the ktms i didn't like the the, the look of it i think they're a bit of a marmite bike uh, looking at it uh, at the front but my uh i looked at all the reviews on this particular bike and I was well impressed, so I went down to um, to the KTM shop, and I said, "Can I sit on it?" And they said, "Yeah, yeah, we're getting a uh, we're getting a demo bike soon." So uh, I intend to have a, a little go on it, and uh, I will film I will film myself on it uh, when I take it out for a ride. So that's uh, another future uh, video and um yeah it's uh, it, it's a very very powerful little bike and it, it is the uh, ktm 390 adventure and apparently it goes like stink for a uh, for a uh, a 390 and uh fuel wise it does run about uh, 200 uh, over 200 miles uh to the tank. Uh, incidentally, the tank is plastic, and I thought, plastic, oh my goodness, but it looks okay, just no problem at all. Um, yeah, it's it's got adjustable shocks, uh, front and rear, rebound, uh, and everything else. Um, it's very techy, it's got a quick shifter. Uh, it's the only thing I didn't like about that was the actual quick shifter. A quick shifter you have to pay 200 pounds extra for, which I think was a bit of a rip off. They unlock it in the, uh, in the software. Uh, but I intend to, uh, to go out for a test ride on it uh, and see how it performs. Um, now I'm six foot one and a half and I can just about plant my feet on the ground. So it is a very tall seat but the seat needs to be changed um my bugbear with seats over the years yeah but they, i had a look on uh, the catalog uh, the ktm uh, 390 catalog and they do a comfort seat which is great so that i'd ask them to put that one on for me and uh everything else everything about the bike i like apart from the headlights it looks like a wasp at the front but that, that, that doesn't bother me as long as it, uh, I'm trying to, in actual fact, I'm trying to future proof uh, me getting a hold of you like. So um, I still like going out for long rides and stuff like that. So yeah, it's not going to be so, uh, hopefully, not so tiring um, on me. So yeah, that, that's my thinking anyway. And I'll put a picture of the bike, obviously, at the end of the video. So. That's um, that's my little video. I'm sorry about the uh, the video footage. It's, it was at the NEC. Um, I I couldn't put any. I hadn't got. I hadn't saved any of my other footage uh, from my other uh, trips on the bike. So um, the next video hopefully will be on my present bike uh, when I do get it on the road. And um, thanks ever so much for uh, subscribing to my channel. Uh, it really means a lot to me and um, yeah the original intention uh, was is, uh, when I, I was very poorly with cancer 
Um, if anything did happen to me, um, then my uh, my grandkids and uh, my kids could look at the videos and see what an ugly bugger I was. <laughs> Um, but that was it. But it's just grown on me. I, I like putting out the videos. So there you go. I'll um, I'll be in the next couple of months. I'll, I'll put it back on the road, and we'll uh, we'll take it for some spins, and uh, I'll I'll uh, take it down to probably down to Wales and uh, for the day, this that and the other. So I'll look forward to uh, seeing you very very soon. Hopefully. Take care and we'll catch you sooner rather than later. Cheers, boy. Mm -hmm.